I attended your panel yesterday where you were talking about um, your website. So you mentioned you were, you got your initial fame from yeah. the Twilight reading. I actually would say it was more from Harry Potter. I oh, sort really? of got, it was only very small yeah. amount. It was enough people to, where my editor at BuzzNet was like, you should do something else. And, yeah. and, but it was during the Harry Potter that yeah. things sort of exploded. So you mentioned yesterday you were forced to read Twilight. You wanted yes. nothing to do with yes. it. Were you forced to, to read Harry Potter in the same way, or did you make oh, that no. decision? No, no, no. I was given the decision to do some, another book series mm -hmm. in the same manner that I did Twilight, and it was my uh, office mate, Marie, who was like, you should read Harry Potter. I think you would like it. So that was, that was totally a choice. I went into it hoping I would like it instead of thinking I would dislike it. And thankfully, I did like it a great deal. Yeah. Now, I remember your initial post, like first three chapters of yeah. the Sorcerer's Stone, you seemed kind of in the same tone as you had been in yeah. Twilight, like poised, yeah, yeah, yeah. poised to make fun of it, poised I, to hate it. Is that what you expected? Yeah, I, well, no, I didn't expect to hate it, to be honest. I wanted, I was concerned about, well, I just did this whole series that was very snarky mm -hmm. and kind of funny, so I was like, okay. Well, I don't want to do something different. I didn't want people to think I, I liked Harry Potter just because I came from Twilight. I was like, okay, if I like it, I need to genuinely like it. So that's why I went, I was very, very critical at first. I was like, okay, I can't just say, I didn't like those chapters though. And it, it was just yeah. like, okay, let me just be super critical so that I don't feel, I didn't want to appear or come off as fake, like, yeah. and just be like, oh, it's not Twilight, so it's good. I wanted to really, really like it, which yeah. thankfully I you know, did. Uh, what moment do you consider was the point where you realized like you weren't going to be mocking it any further? Uh, there's two. The first real one was the introduction of Hagrid, um, <laughs> but the, I would say that the other one was the end of the first book. End of the first book. When I I totally I didn't see it coming at all, and, it, yeah. and the whole quarrel thing surprised me. Yeah. So that that was my moment when I was like, oh, I totally misjudged the series. Yeah. This is not at all what I thought it was going to be about. So that was definitely the moment where I was like, okay, these are going to be fun. Like mm -hmm. this is going to be something that I think. I'm and I remember your reaction to the Diagon Alley chapter. You were like, "Wait a minute!" Oh my God! <laughs> it's so. But there's so many of those. Like, and and I, you know, I I just actually finished editing the uh, Mark Reed's uh, Order of the Phoenix book, and my, my big thing in that one is is I feel like the Department of Mysteries, and mm -hmm. when we learn about that, is sort of like Diagon Alley, but like mm -hmm. a grown up part of it, okay. because it's this huge imagined location. And there's so many details in it, and a lot of them are just in passing. The same thing with Diagon Alley is there's just these little things mentioned, and you're like, no, I want a whole book on that one story <laughs> you just mentioned. And so I feel the same way about Department of Mysteries. Like, it's still oh God. I remember you tr seemed to truly not know anything about it like going into it. I remember you mm -hmm. knew Snape kills Dumbledore. Thought it was in the wrong book, though. How did you avoid the, those kind of spoilers? I remember you were dropping the band member as you said. Well, I mean, during the process I had... It's funny because during Mark Reed's Harry Potter, I only had two moderators, and now I have 19 mm -hmm. because it's so hard to do that. But I, it was one of those things where I, I knew Harry Potter fans, but I didn't, I didn't, I, I had no interest in it. So anything that I might have picked up over the years, I purposely just sort of was like, I don't know, you know, I don't know these things through osmosis. I'd never heard anything yeah. aside from Snape kills Dumbledore, and I was a moderator of this pretty large message board, and we got a bunch of trolls who's spoil people mm -hmm. intentionally and found different ways to do it. So that was the only reason I knew that. And mm -hmm. I, so I didn't know it in the context of why it happened or what any of it meant. I just knew those three words. So anything that I had picked up w were just, you know, I knew Harry was a wizard and Sirius Black was a villain. Yeah. Because that's all. And I knew the Sirius Black thing because I used to work at Hot Topic and we would get the Sirius Black shirts with yeah. me in jail. And so, but I, it was just one of those things like you have no interest in it, so mm -hmm. you don't pay attention when anything I'd never seen any of the trailers, I'd never seen any of the movies, so. So I remember it was such an interesting perspective to see, because it's so rare that people don't know. Yeah. Having read Harry Potter, to see someone reading it that totally didn't know what was coming next. Yeah. So well, I think that was what was unique about your It's really hard just in the internet in general, because, you know, I don't, like, I haven't watched Glee since the first season, but I know everything that's happened, because mm -hmm. if you're online, it's hard to, spo the spoilers are everywhere, because fandom is so, uh, you know, pervasive, it's everywhere. So there's things I know about Glee and I've never seen any of it actually on television and stuff. So um, yeah, it's fun. I like the idea of, of you know, discovering a fictional world completely, like, innocently. You know, because that's what's fun when someone gives you a book and is like, just read this. And that's such a fun process. So I, I, like, I like documenting it. Now, the major tone of your blog is very hum humorous, very snarky, but there are several posts that you step back away from that. Oh, yeah. and 
really opened up about your personal life and using Harry Potter as like a gateway to that. So what sure. was it like opening up about such personal things to strangers? Uh, like terrifying. Uh, and I'm, and I'm, t- I'm totally cool being super honest about that. It was mm-hmm. incredibly scary. And, and the first, I mean, I, I mentioned details or told many little stories, but it was until Order of the Phoenix mm-hmm. when I was introduced to Dolores Umbridge for the first time. You know, and, you know, and so I'm actually, you know, editing the book, or I just finished editing the book, and, and it was actually really hard to go back and reread Order of the Phoenix because so much of it, I'm like, you know, so much of that book reflects periods of my life, and, and that's what I love about fiction is when you, you think that there's something that happened to you that has never happened to anyone else. And then all of a sudden, you know, JK was able to write this character, write this dynamic, or the dynamic of the situation between Umbridge and Harry, and you're suddenly like, someone totally understands this thing that I went through. So I, I, that's why I was inspired to share, because I, I felt that was such a personal experience for me to read the JK's words and, and to read these characters that I'm like, you know what, maybe, I should explain why. Because I think there's, fandom gets a lot of hatred from people who aren't in fandoms. They don't understand why we're so attached to the fictional world. And so to to me it was like, this is the reason that I like this book. This is the reason why. And to say, not objectively, this is is the reason you should like it, but just I want to explain why I did. So it was very, it's a very cathartic experience and you know, I still do that. Yeah. Often as much as I can because mm-hmm. it's 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 great to be able to connect to your fiction that way. How has it been um, with the whole Mark does stuff mm-hmm. franchise? Yeah. If you will, and now it's right. It started off doing one book at a time, one, and then just doing watches the movie after the book. Now yeah. it's a massive laundry list of oh, books. And does that get overwhelming or? Uh, yeah, but but it's an overwhelming that I'm always aware of like what sort of. Like gift I've been given from other people because the thing is is I could st- I could always still write but it's the fact that there's so many people who read along and so many people who comment and who come to you know my when I went on tour this year who come to the conventions and whatnot so anytime I do get overwhelmed because I've, I'm writing so much I'm writing you know 25 30 thousand words a week every single week so I'm writing you know six days a week so anytime I do feel overwhelmed I just take a moment to think of like how lucky it is when you, that there is you know, so many different fandoms that I've, you know, steamrolled through, and these people are just so wonderful, and they love being emotional about fiction and characters and all these things. So, I mean, it's overwhelming every week, you know. And it's it's overwhelming in a different context, like well, coming here, you know, and, and, you know, LeakyCon last year was my first convention ever that I'd ever spoken at. And I remember being terrified because my initial room I was booked in only fit, like, 30 people. And then at the, the two days before, they, they were like, oh, you can't fit in that room anymore. And I remember showing up, and there were just hundreds of people, and I'm like, I don't, you know, because the thing is, it's like when you look at traffic, or you look at, like, comment, how many comments you're leaving, you can never totally understand how many people that is. Mm-hmm. So last year's LeakyCon, I was like, oh, people read my blog. A lot of people read my blog. And so that there's that aspect of it that's overwhelming, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, you know, doing the Mock Dust Stuff tour earlier this year was just, you know, I go, I'm yeah. in the middle of the desert and there are people who will come to watch me speak and that's so overwhelming and it's the coolest thing so I'm like, yeah, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Starkin. So yeah, it is overwhelming, but it's like I always think of it as a positive thing. I'd rather be yeah. overwhelmed doing this than be overwhelmed doing something I hate. Right. So um, speaking of that, this saying like this is a dream, is there... Is there something, some other job, dream job you want to get past, past this? Like, how long do you want to do Mark Does Stuff Forever? I, I would like to just keep doing it, but this is doing this, especially in the, you know, I got laid off in January, and so now Mark Does Stuff is, that's my full-time thing, and selling books and doing the videos, that's how I, you know, pay my bills now. Mm-hmm. So, but the cool thing is, is that I, despite that I write so much, it's uh, I, the first time I've had free time in mm-hmm. years, and where I have, like, good chunks of it. So I am actually in the process of writing my first novel. So I'm about a third of the way done, and it's fiction. It's my own imagined, wow. somewhat imagined universe. It takes place in the real world that becomes an imagined kind of me. But um, that's the route I do want to take. Is yeah. become not that my ebooks are not books, but I really want to become an author where I create my own thing. But even then, I still don't want to stop doing Martha stuff. I'm fine doing this for. So I'm sick of it, and I'm not sick of it. I, there's so many things on my list that I would love to read and document or w- watch and document. So 
thing is, is that, you know, even as I transition to being in a, in, you know, a, a, I hate saying a real author, because it's not like my things I'm writing are not real, but you know, as I transition to being an author, I really don't want to give up on this stuff. Like, I think it's gonna, I, I'm, I'm fine doing it for a very long time. And I think you mentioned yesterday someone calculated the amount of time it'll take to go through your 57, life. I'll be 57 years old. So that's a good, good job security. I can retire after I, <laughs> yeah, assuming I don't add anything to this, yeah. so. And I just wanted the other phenomenon, and I know you have a panel, that's your next one, the Mark Reed Spent Fic. Yeah, it wasn't ever supposed to happen. And, and what ended up happening was, you know, when I was going to do, uh, in February, or February, March, I did my first promotional tour. You know, I, I was releasing books, I had just gotten laid off, and I was like, okay, if I want to make this serious, I want to go out and meet people. And, and, you know, I wasn't thinking of it as a marketing thing, I was just like, you know, it's, it's time that this happens. And so my plan was to go on tour, have these little meetups, maybe read from a Harry Potter novel or whatnot. And um, I'd never planned to ever read fan fiction. And it wasn't a part of it. And it wasn't that I was disinterested in it, I just didn't think about it. And it was, my first date was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I went to this wonderful, oh, I can't, I can't remember the name of it, this gorgeous secondhand bookstore. And I was going to read from Mark Reed's Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and literally, like just a couple minutes before my pet, my little event started, they had a boot little table set up. It was just after Valentine's Day, and they had this book by Fabio called Comanche. And I was like, I don't want to read from my book anymore. Can I read from this? And so, I, I read you know large portions of this book, um, and it was super fun to do a live version of Mark Reed's. And that's what immediately, as soon as I was done that event, I was like, I totally have this tour wrong, and um, I. You know, got on Twitter and told everyone I was coming to Cleveland the next day. I was like, bring the fan fiction, bring the worst books you can find, like something I wanted to recreate. And so, what I wanted to do was to do what I do on my site to read something that I'd never read before and then give a live reaction to it. And it just spiraled out of control. Every event, that was the one thing that sort of well, I opened it and closed it with the reading of a fan fiction or novel. In the second day, Cleveland, someone brought Hermione and the Pizza Boy. Now, what you were talking about oh yesterday. Oh my gosh, I've read it 34 times and I still don't understand it. But it's just a beautiful work of art, and I'm probably going to open my thing Your tonight with, with that and then submit. But it, yeah, it was this thing of like, you know, and I actually did on tour, people brought me good fan fiction to read, which was awesome too. And it, it helped me find a lot of like really cool dynamics in mm -hmm. fic that um, I enjoy. And so, but it's just, it's just very entertaining to read terrible stuff. Mm -hmm. I think it's really nice, actually, that how connected you are with your fans. That I, all yesterday, you were sitting down the stairs with everyone in a circle. Like, what's it like to have made all these fans, but that are actually seem to be friends? Like, you, yeah. you're making. I noticed yeah. yesterday you were making efforts to like remember people's names. Yeah. Like you pointed people out. You're like, you were on this tour, and yeah. I thought that was really cool. So what's oh, that cool. like? Well, thank you. Uh, well, I and I mean, I took that, and that whole the reason I do that is because I grew up going um, to see bands, and going, you know. Mm -hmm. in, uh, the punk rock scene, and I always, it was always really cool if you saw a band a bunch of times and they remembered your name. And I always used to think it, it always made you feel so neat and made you feel like that band cared about you, that they remembered you, and that they would talk to you, and that they were down to earth. And so for my thing, I never want to forget that I couldn't do what I'm doing without other people. It had like everything on Mark does stuff depends on a fandom and communities, and that and it wouldn't survive without it. And so I, it's just so fun to be able to fandoms and, and the Harry Potter fandom and, and now I'm discovering the Buffy fandom are so open and accepting and it's just a blast to be able to just hang out with people and talk about these things that I love so yeah and I mean it, yesterday that I was I helped moderate the uh, Harry Potter minorities panel mm -hmm. and it was we should have had eight million hours because we had so much to talk to so I just took a group of people and I was like let's just go have a conversation outside and there was like we didn't start off as like 30 of us and we kept people we people would pass by and we'd pull them in to have conversations it's just that I feel like in the non-internet world it's hard to make that connection with people and people are always so you know averse to being emotional and being honest and so we, we were like let's just do it so I like making that personal connection with people okay well that's, thank you so much for your time thank you very much yes